Okay guys, in this lesson we are looking at output devices specifically for physically challenged users. That's users who may not have the full uh, use of their limbs or something with their body. Okay, and so there are alternative ways of doing the same stuff that we do and this is how they do it. So we're going to be looking at the following things. We're going to look at monitors, braille display devices, a braille embosser or a braille printer, smart glasses, okay, the HoloLens 2, which I'd love to get one day, assistive listening devices, and augmentative, augmentative and alternative communication devices. So let's start with monitors. Okay, so in terms of monitors, what do monitors have that help people that are physically challenged? Well, pretty much their size, okay? You get large monitors, which help people who battle seeing things that are quite small. You get large monitors. These monitors often come with anti-glare screens and color and contrast adjustments on the screen. So it's not just a hardware thing. We can also adjust color and contrast according to the Windows settings as well. If we go to ease of access, we can you can actually see we can change color filters, we can invert stuff, make a grayscale, inverted grayscale, we can bring up a particular color. If someone has color blindness with a particular color, we can then uh, accent certain colors or take away other colors to help them see better. We can also change the contrast of our screens as well, not just physically but also software based on the computer itself. So that's one thing with monitors and how they help people who are physically challenged. What about those who battle to see? They have trouble with their eyesight. Well, braille display devices, believe it or not, are coming to the forefront. So here you can see, I mean, that's a braille watch. That is a braille watch. So it actually tells the time, a little dot sort of raised up and down as the time changes. And you know, braille is obviously just a surface of raised dots in particular shapes and patterns that blind people can then recognize with the tips of the fingers. So there you can see is a braille display right over here. And the braille display also, uh, it actually changes. It's a digital display that actually then lifts little dots up and down. It's absolutely amazing. The Braille printer or the Braille embosser, also just for printing out in Braille. So whatever you type out, it then translates and prints out in Braille that people can then read with their fingertips. It's absolutely amazing. The HoloLens 2, kind of like a virtual reality, augmented reality tool, but also being used to help people make sense of the world around them and to be able to control things with uh, either head movements or eye movements or sound. And the HoloLens 2 is actually a very, very powerful device that's still in its infancy in terms of commercial adoption, but I'm pretty sure within a couple of years, it's gonna be in classrooms all around the world. I can't wait. ALDs. ALDs are assistive listening devices. Basically, guys, it's just uh, a little device with a very high quality microphone or a very sensitive microphone, and then it connects to some sort of earphones, either your built in um, headphones or if you are using what's it called? Um, uh, earphones. Oh, uh, listening devices. Or if you're using hearing aids, it connects to your hearing aids as well. So it just kind of uh, amplifies the sound of everything around you or something that you are specifically pointing your device at or connecting your device to. And that's what an assistive listening device does. And in some places, like when people go and attend lectures and stuff, there's a, a system called a loop system and they can actually plug their device into this little system and then they get a live feed from the microphone of somebody talking up at the front. They get a live feed of the voice coming into the ears, which is pretty darn cool. Augmentative and Alternative Communication, or AAC. This is for people who battle to pronounce words. So they can't form the words properly, maybe physically or mentally something happened and they can't pronounce, but they can visually communicate or physically communicate with their hands. So basically, here here's a, a better definition than what I would give, okay. Communication methods used to supplement or replace speech or writing for those with impairments or in the production uh, or comprehension of spoken or written language. 
I'm going to read that again so it makes sense, okay? So, Augmentative and Alternative Communication, or AAC, communication methods used to supplement or replace speech or writing for those with impairments in the production or comprehension of spoken or written language. So people who are unable to communicate with their voice, and they can't say anything, they can use a device which can then tell you what it is they're trying to say. And you'll see there's an example over there on the, the GoTalk, I think it's called GoTalkie 20 plus. Okay, so there you go guys. Thank you very much.